Hi beautiful people, my name is Foster Mom Tiff and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about what it looks like to start the fostering process in the state of Florida. When me and my wife were thinking about becoming licensed foster parents, we went to YouTube to try to figure out what kind of things that we needed to get ready to become foster parents or what the process was to become foster parents in the state of Florida, specifically Southwest Florida. We didn't find that much quality information about what that process looked like. So I wanted to take some time to kind of go through what the process was with us and how we became licensed foster parents in the state of Florida. try to get pregnant five different times and spent about ten thousand dollars doing so there just came a point where we didn't want to spend any more money on trying to get pregnant on our own and we had thought that there's many kids in this world that need a family um, about four hundred thousand kids to be exact in the United States and my wife had always had this dream when she was growing up that she was going to be either an adoptive mom or a foster mom. And so she threw the idea of being foster parents out and we sat down and began doing our research. We Googled how to become foster parents in the state of Florida and it brought us over to the Department of Children and Families website. It told us that we needed to call the Florida Foster Information Center. We went ahead and called and they took down our name, our phone number, our email address, and I believe the county in which we lived in so they could get us in touch with that specific county's fostering program to see what the next steps would be. A few days later, we got a call from the administrative assistant with our licensing agency asking if she could send us an application for inquiry to become a foster parent. This application was super simple. It asked some personal information about me and my wife and any other adults that lived in the home. And after they received that application, they would send us a link for an open house. The open house is pretty much just a information session that they're able to give us more information about what this fostering program looks like and what fostering just looks like in general. So we filled out the application and we received the date for the next open house where we would join other prospective foster families in getting answers to some of the fostering questions that we have and just get more information about what this fostering journey will look like in the next coming weeks. And it was a lot of good information and we learned a lot more than I think we realized that we were gonna actually learn. And we came back home, we talked about it and we were like, no, we want to do this. So we emailed our administrative assistant and we had said, hey, what is the next steps? We're ready to go on and um, continue this journey. The next part of this journey is the fun part. It is the PRIDE classes. So PRIDE stands for Parent Resources for Information, Development, and Education. These classes are six weeks in length. They are one day per week from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. They go over different competencies that you need to know as a prospective foster parent or adoptive parent. And you get to do different activities to put these practices or competencies into place. You also get to work with other prospective foster parents and adoptive parents while doing these activities. There will be homework and you will need these homeworks completed for the end process because they do put this in your file to show that you have participated in the courses. On top of the homework, there will be e-learnings that you need to complete as well. 
those take a awful long time, including the homework. It, sometimes we sat down and did homework for a couple hours um, on top of doing those e-learnings. So make sure you keep on top of the e-learnings and the homework because they will be used at the end when you do become licensed. Once you get closer to the end of the six weeks, a licensing specialist will reach out and kind of just get to know you a little bit better and to tell you what it's going to look like in the next coming weeks with the two home visits and what you need to do to prepare your home for those home visits. The licensing specialist will come over twice before you get licensed to do your home visits. The first home visit is just to make sure that things are coming along and to get little things like your driver's license and insurance card and make sure that you're on track for the next home visit that needs to be done in two weeks. The second home visit that will be done before you get licensed is to make sure that you are completely finished to assess the living arrangements, make sure you have alarms, the water temperature in the faucets are good, and make sure you have a pool gate, escape routes, stuff like that. I will go over in another video of what those home visits look like. There is a lot to them, but don't worry, your licensing specialist will help you along the way if you have any questions. The goal of the licensing specialist is to get you licensed within 100 days. So that 100 days starts from when you called, not from when you finish your pride classes. So you're already about, I think like 30 or 40 days in. The reason why they say 100 days is it does take some time to get through the background and the fingerprints depending on how far back the state is. So their goal is 100 days, so make sure you have that homework and those e-learnings done because if you do not, this is going to delay your 100 days. It could go even further if you do not have this done. These e-learnings and the homeworks from the Pride classes, they do get put into a binder for you and your licensing specialist to say that you've completed the courses and all of the materials. The I do want to let you guys know that they will pull fingerprints, backgrounds, they will also pull a DCF search to see if DCF was ever called on you as a child or as an adult. They will also go over any speeding tickets or any time that you have called the cops. Just because you have speeding tickets doesn't automatically mean that you can't become a foster parent or a record. They just want you to explain the reasons as to why you have a record or why you've called the cops in the past. Um, if you feel uncomfortable about these situations, then this is not going to be the easy part for you. If you're an open book like me, then maybe it won't be so difficult, but there is that part that can get very uncomfortable. Once you get all your documents completed, your homework turned in, those e-learnings done, and your fingerprints and your background checks come back and the home visits have been completed and you have passed, your licensing specialist will send the application over for approval. You will get a license in the mail once you become a licensed foster home. It does not come right away. I think ours took about a month for it to come through. But just because you're waiting on that license does not mean that you cannot take your first placement. You are in the system as a licensed foster home, so they will call you when they're ready for their first placement. That's really all that it takes to become a licensed foster home in the state of Florida, specifically Southwest Florida. I know that I say Southwest Florida, but I'm sure different counties in Florida also follow the same premise of what the rules and policies and practices are to becoming a foster parent. So I hope that this information has answered some of your questions and maybe convinced you to become foster parents because Lord knows we need more. But please like, share, subscribe, and turn on those notifications for more information about how to become a foster parent and to follow our fostering journey. Thanks guys.